Well, thank you, Azim, and thank you for the, the team over at Cogex for inviting me. Um, it's great. I've never been in, uh, in a room with that many people, actually, so I'm kind of impressed. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about things that you have already heard about, so I'll try to go as fast as possible on those parts, uh, because Cass and Simon did a great job explaining to you what are the constraints of what we're actually seeing nowadays. And I'll be talking to you about uh, large-scale AI with optical computing. Well, the whole prime of AI these days, and uh, this part, I'm going to go fast, uh, is mostly that if you go into the community <coughs> and you ask them uh, what is the most important part, uh, it's either uh, the, the software, the hardware, and within the software, you get to have different camps that are looking at deep learning and, and so forth. Everyone sees different things at their levels. And that's interesting because they're optimizing for it. And that's where we are right now. So it goes from just hardware all the way to software. But I think we, the AI elephant that we have in front of us is hiding something that is basically something that uh, either Simon and Cass talked about. And we, it's all about memory. Not that type of memory. We, the one that's in your RAM. And you've heard all the good things uh, already about this. It's mostly about storing it. Storing is one thing. It's a bunch of NANs or NORs. Can't remember what it is. The most important part is the transport. The transport is really what's killing you. And it's not just the transport from one chip to the other. Actually, if you talk to uh, people at Stanford, David Miller, for instance, he tells you that the most important part of the transport is within the chip. And it's killing you. And actually, one of the other things that we don't talk about that much is we, as soon as you have something in your hand that does something very different, you get to be thinking about different algorithm. That's kind of something that has come up uh, every time that we have had better GPUs, better CPUs, we have had better algorithm. Or we've actually looked at algorithm that were mm, not so good. And then we essentially look back at them when with the bigger GPUs, bigger CPUs, and actually made it work. A bit like what, uh, what happened with uh, the evolutionary work from DeepMind. So in a sense, what I want to impress on you is really that those AI algorithms that we keep on talking about today are mostly the construct of the hardware. If you change the hardware, do you change the algorithm? That power level that is required is essentially another issue. Um, it's either the semiconductor industry that says, if you look at everything, in 2040, it's 100% of the power generated worldwide. That's not funny. Or people back in 2025 telling you that it's about going to be 20% of the power generated worldwide. It's not funny either, because we don't know how to scale either our power generation capabilities to be fulfilling those needs. So here, I'm going to be talking to you about what we do over at Lython. At Lighton, we're essentially using diffusive media as memories. It's a quirky idea. It's crazy. But this is what we do. So what are diffusive media? That could be the fog, the milk, could be um, the cloud. Actually, we don't use those because they move. And we don't want those to be moving in what we do. But eventually, you may be thinking that we could be going that around. So what happens is we take information, we put it in a laser form, and we actually make it go through that medium. It's a bit of a simulation of what happens. Data come in, comes in, goes through the medium, and then eventually goes on the other side. And each and every one of these light beams interfere with each other, a little bit like the young slit experiment, but now at a much higher level. And on the data out, you have something to pick up all these photons. And then you have the operation that you want in the first place. 
That operation is called the random projection. It's somehow being used in many different parts of machine learning, but as I said, one of the underlying reasons you don't use sometimes something, it's mostly because you can't have access to it with the hardware you have. If you have the hardware, now you can play with it. And so we can actually do those things with the hardware we've been developing at a large scale, pretty fast, even compared to the GPUs that we have available. And we can do that at very low power. We are talking about 30 watts as opposed to 250 watts compared to the GPUs that are on the market nowadays. Not only that, but the types of operations we can do is of the order of peta ops. So in about a year since uh, Lighton was created and we raised some money uh, here in Par uh, back there in Paris, we've been going from the lab all the way to something that looks like something that can be used, a rack, essentially. And we've been essentially playing with this thing. Interns, uh, our own engineers, people that we call alpha users, people that are essentially that we know that are going to be uh, very delicate with it in the first place. We are expecting beta users afterwards, but alpha users are essentially giving us the feedback we want. And we're essentially using it in different parts of the machine learning uh, um, algorithm that are being used nowadays. And so I'm announcing today the fact that we're going to be opening it, our cloud, Light on Cloud, to beta users by the end of the year. Uh, the idea here is to make sure that the community has access to hardware they have never been to have access to before. And that way, we think that some of the AI that's going to be generated is going to be different. And it's going to be using not just our hardware, but it's going to be different uh, qualitatively and quantitatively. Here's an example of what we do when we get to have our interns trying our OPU. The OPU, the optical processing unit, we're not the uh, IPU, we're the OPU, um, can essentially uh, do uh, detection, change detection in uh, high dimensional distributions. Uh, the, the point of it here is that if you were to be looking at this, at this video, and if you were to be doing frame after frame, you could actually figure out if somebody is moving or not. The whole point here, and I'm not quite sure it's free, yeah, is you see movements, but they are not really the ones that are showing up. I'm not quite sure we saw this uh, very well. Anyway, here's another uh, example of what we do. We could also not just looking at uh, high resolution videos, but we can also look at the structure of graphs, a little bit like what Simon was talking about. In graphs, you want to figure out if they are what we call clicks. And these clicks actually show up every so often, and you can essentially do that with uh, what we have. So any time we have a new intern or we have a new engineer, uh, the whole process is, OK, let's take a look at uh, those algorithms and see to what extent we can look at uh, problems that have been looked into before and see how we can improve those things. Anyway, what I wanted to say is that optics that used to be thought as just a way to do uh, information from one port to the other, interconnects, is now can be actually be used for computations. It's low power. It essentially is also a little bit like uh, what uh, Simon was saying, massively parallel here. Uh, the most important part and the main difference between uh, uh, what we have at GraphCore and what we have at Lightning is is really the fact that we do not design much of this. There is a lot of design on graph core side, and we don't have to. But those, we're solving different problems sometimes. But I want to point out also the same thing that uh, Simon was saying. That is, since now the constraints are getting so hard to beat, we have a whole opening for new kind of hardware. And we all have the thinking that somehow 
our architecture is going to be win over everything. I'm more thinking that we're going to have niches for each and every one of us in a very large market. Well, that's about it. Thank you very much.